Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at my woman. The one with the monotone grating voice, those wonderful pantsuits, and that cackling hyena laugh. It's time to get her behind the Oval Office desk that I had so many escapades under. It's time to take a look at Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. Shortly after Bill Clinton took office as president in 1992, the Clintons were involved in their first scandal in office called Filegate. The Clintons allegedly started collecting data and information on FBI files in regards to all their political enemies that have either gotten in their way or mainly Republicans. The Clintons hired a former bar bouncer, Craig Livingstone, to go and access these files in the FBI. Fast forward to a year later in May of 1993 when Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton fired travel staff from the White House. The White House claims that this was due to financial discrepancies within the travel staff office, but many claim it was actually because Hillary wanted to appoint her own people. With all the media attention surrounding this case, it led to the reinstatement of the previous employees that had been fired. 1993, Waco, Texas. The Branch Davidians, led by David Koresh, a religious group in Waco, Texas, were suspected of weapons violations. The White House, under Bill Clinton, sent the ATF to raid the compound and serve a warrant. Four ATF officers were killed, leading to a 51-day siege. The FBI ended up firing tear gas canisters into the home, and a fire erupted, killing 76 men, women, and children, including Koresh himself. Also within 1993, close friend to Bill and Hillary Clinton and Deputy White House Counsel Vince Foster, who was connected to the Whitewater scandal before the presidency, and the Travelgate scandals was found dead of a gunshot wound to the mouth and was ruled a suicide. Federal prosecutors were not allowed into his office immediately following his death, but White House aides were allowed to go into his office. During this time, it's alleged that some files and evidence in regards to Travelgate and Whitewater were removed. It was then this whole business after his suicide of whether you tried to um, have records removed <clears throat> or have them examined before they were shown. You know, I want to be very clear about this. Okay. There were no documents taken out of Vince Foster's office on the night he died. Did you hear exactly what Hillary Clinton said in that clip? This is the type of political games that politicians play all the time using their wordsmith skills. No one was in the office that night, but it doesn't say anything about the White House aides being in there the next day. And that's the exact kind of wording that Hillary Clinton gets away with all the time. We don't go too far ahead. Also in 1993 is Chinagate. In Chinagate, millions of dollars were donated to the Clinton campaign from the Chinese government in exchange for America's most classified nuclear and satellite tech information. 120 people fled the country or pleaded the fifth. Let's jump a little bit further ahead to 1997. Bill Clinton admitted that the White House invited and roomed 404 overnight guests that were high-valued campaign donors. Now that may be the end of the scandals within the first Bill Clinton presidency, but it didn't stop there because from there, Hillary Clinton went on to be Senator of New York and then Secretary of State under the Obama administration, where a whole slew of other problems arose. As Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton presented the reset button to Russia for relations. But instead of saying reset on the button, it actually said overcharged. And the Russian-American relationship has since become the worst since the Cold War. As of right now, only 2% of Russians now have confidence that Obama will do the right thing, and 81% of Russians hold a negative view of the United States. September 11th, 2012. The embassy in Benghazi is attacked by insurgents. The American consulate in Benghazi is attacked, and Sean Smith and Ambassador Stevens are killed. Soldiers, a mile away from of the security team, are told to stand down and not to help. Eventually, they disobey these orders and left the annex to go help but it was too late for Smith and Stevens. Realizing that the annex where the CIA and these soldiers were stationed could be the next target after the Benghazi compound, these six soldiers fought their way back to it 
and possibly against hundreds of soldiers and throughout the night. Over the course of 13 hours, they requested on multiple occasions for backup, and all those backup around the world were continually told by the State Department under Hillary Clinton's advisement to stand down. The State Department claimed that over the course of those 13 hours, at no point in time could they have gotten help to those people, despite stations all around the world, which has now proven that there could have been help within the course of under two hours. To make matters worse, while the soldiers were stationed on top of the annex compound fighting off waves of enemy soldiers, they found out through media that the White House was actually claiming that this was a sporadic attack of protesters outside the compound that were doing it in response to a video that was posted on YouTube from an anti-Islamic person. This of course was a lie that Hillary Clinton herself told over the course of the next few days and leaked into the media reports as well. But we now know through the upcoming scandal I'm about to talk with the email servers that looking back into Hillary Clinton's emails that night during the attacks, she emailed her daughter Chelsea and told her that this attack was not due to the YouTube video and that in fact it was an attack on the embassy by terrorists. Of course, lying comes naturally to the Clintons. Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty joined Ambassador Stevens and Agent Smith in the lives lost in Benghazi. In total, we lost four Americans because this State Department refused to send any help. You know, I don't find it too funny that Hillary Clinton said this at a recent rally in regards to Benghazi. Yes, I mean, Libya was a different uh, kind of uh, calculation, yeah. and we didn't lose a single person. When asked why help wasn't sent in a congressional hearing, Hillary Clinton had this to say. Was it because of a protest, or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? Apparently, Hillary Clinton hasn't ever heard of the saying, those who do not study history are doomed to repeat it. Because by answering the way she did, she is virtually ensuring that if we can't figure out what went wrong in the past with her actions, we might run into this type of thing in the future again and lose more American lives. So not only did Hillary Clinton not help our soldiers in Benghazi by sending backup, she also refused to help them in the end to figure out what was wrong and what went wrong with the situation by not participating in the Benghazi hearings. Within the same time period, Hillary Clinton got herself into more trouble with her private email server. Instead of following the guidelines for the State Department and using a sanctioned phone from the State Department, she chose instead to use her private email server. Of these emails, she responded to and received over 1,700 classified State Department emails. 22 of those were top secret, and a couple of those were actually labeled SAP, Special Access Programs, so classified above top secret that the judge involved in this case actually had to go and get clearance himself to take a look at these emails to see how bad it actually was. While 1,700 emails is a lot in regards to the classified emails for the State Department, Hillary Clinton also deleted 32,000 emails that she deemed private. I guess we'll never know what was in those emails and if they did have anything to do with the State Department because they are wiped clean from her server now. In the hearings, Trey Gowdy ripped apart Hillary Clinton over her emails. That was my question. 90 to 95% of it, my work-related emails were in the state system. If they wanted to that, see them, they would certainly have been able to do so. You know what, so. that, that, is, that is maybe the 10th time you have cited that figure today. It is. And I have not heard anyone other than you ever cite that figure. The yeah. Inspector General report, Madam Secretary, the Inspector General report, which you can't argue by perfect analogy, but you can certainly extrapolate. The Inspector General report found that less than 1%, less than 1% of State Department emails, record emails, were captured. So they give a number of less than 1%, and you give a number of 90%. Now, the Benghazi hearings and this whole email scandal pales in comparison to what may have the Clintons in the hottest water yet and that is the donations that have been made to the Clinton Foundation while Hillary Clinton 
was Secretary of State. Investigators are trying to figure out how the Clintons' charity work has been linked together with the money that is given to them for their for-profit speeches, how her speeches are linked to her work at the State Department, and why nations are donating millions upon millions to the foundation. Could it possibly have to do with an exchange for political favors? The New York Times and Wall Street Journal report that there were multi-million dollar donations made to the Clinton Foundation that were not disclosed in direct contradiction to the agreement made between Hillary Clinton and the White House. Those are just some of the political scandals. Now let's go to the affairs of the Clintons. You know, for a woman that claims to be a feminist and the voice of women around the world, running for office right now, Hillary Clinton has a lot of explaining to do when it comes to the silencing of rape victims, specifically victims of her husband, President Bill Clinton. In the 1970s, Juanita Broderick, one of Bill Clinton's staffers to get him to be governor of Arkansas, was told by Bill Clinton to meet him in the lobby to discuss the campaign issues. Instead, Bill Clinton called her hotel room and said that the lobby was actually full of press and that he would like to actually come up to her room to discuss things. Reluctantly, Juanita agreed to that and invited him up. Upon getting to the room, Bill Clinton raped Juanita. During the course of trying to kiss Juanita, he bit her lip, which caused it to bleed. When it was all over, Bill Clinton left Juanita sitting on the bed, walked over to the door, turned around, put on his sunglasses, looked at Juanita's lip, and said, you better get some ice on that, and then left. A week later, Juanita was confronted by Hillary Clinton again and cornered and told in icy words, in not so many words, that she better keep her mouth shut about the incident. But that wasn't all in regards to the affairs. Bill Clinton was also accused of having a 12-year relationship with another person called Jennifer Flowers. And after a Super Bowl, Bill and Hillary Clinton appeared in an interview to talk about that and dismiss the allegations. She's a legend and is described in some detail in a supermarket tabloid, which she calls a 12-year affair with you. It, that allegation is false. The 60 Minutes interview after the Super Bowl that year apparently worked because a lot of people dismissed the allegations and let the Clintons go on with their affairs. Fast forward to 1998. Bill Clinton, under oath, admits to the 12-year relationship with Jennifer Flowers, proving that everything said in the 60 Minutes interview was a lie. Among some of the other affairs that Bill Clinton had were Kathleen Willey and Paula Jones, but it didn't hold a candle to the affair that captured the attention of the nation, 21-year-old intern Monica Lewinsky. Despite Newsweek having the story details, they actually refused to run with it. While the internet was in its infancy at the time, on dial-up no less, one of the websites actually did run with it. And that website is one of the most visited websites today. It was the Drudge Report. For only the second time in American history, this actually led to the impeachment process of the president, Bill Clinton. Yet with all these affairs going on, Hillary Clinton immediately jumped to the media and tried to put it on the Republicans, saying that they were trying to sabotage her husband's presidency. Those rascally Republicans made me have sexual relations with that young sexy intern. Wait. What were we talking about here? Famously now, one of the biggest sound clips that everybody knows is Bill Clinton saying this in regards to the relationship with Monica Lewinsky. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Of course, a year later. Indeed, I did have a relationship with Miss Lewinsky that was not appropriate. In fact, it was wrong. To understand Hillary Clinton's horrible positions on sexual assault victims, we may have to travel back before all the affairs, before all the scandals in office. We have to travel back to the 1970s. The year is 1975, and Hillary Clinton defends a 40-year-old male that allegedly raped a 12-year-old girl. Hillary Clinton did such a compelling job of defending this man that she said that the girl, the 12-year-old girl, exaggerated and encouraged this man to rape her. She also had the bloody underwear of this 12-year-old victim thrown out as evidence against this man. And in result, he only served 10 months in jail. Over and over again, Hillary Clinton has been behind discrediting all these women that have these allegations on Bill 
by using the FBI to collect files on these women to smear and demean them. Which makes one of her latest PSAs released during her latest run for presidency that much more unbelievable. I want to send a message to every survivor of sexual assault. Don't let anyone silence your voice. You have a right to be heard and you have a right to be believed. We're with you. Yeah, as long as the accused isn't a Clinton family member. I actually find it funny that over the course of this campaign trail for Hillary Clinton running for president this year, that she has been promising the voters a return to the 90s administration of the Clintons. Of course, she's hoping that you forget about all the scandals and criminal behavior and affairs of the Clintons that have happened over the last decade and a half. Because that, of course, is not the administration that she's hoping that you remember that we can return to. You know, if there was a list floating around out there of the top most scandalous and evil administrations to ever hold office in the White House, the Clinton administration would be among the top three. So after hearing about all the criminal behavior, the scandals, and the affairs of the Clintons between Hillary and Bill, do you really want to return to the presidency of the 90s under the Clinton administration? Hey everyone, thanks for watching my analysis of Hillary Clinton. You can click over here to subscribe to my channel to catch all the latest videos from the Generation Y conservative, me, or click over here where you can watch my last analyses of Marco Rubio and John Kasich and Dr. Ben Carson. Now, coming up, we're gonna take a look at Bernie Sanders, the avowed socialist in this race. And while an honest guy, we definitely have some things to look at in regards to his policy stances. So until then, I'm the Generation Y conservative. Thanks for watching. Okay, let's see here. Uh, the lighting girl. Uh, oh, okay, I've already been with her. Check. Uh, camera lady. Uh, I've already been with her. Check. Makeup lady. Was just with her. Check. Oh, boy. All right, this isn't adding up too good. Are you guys telling me I have to go home with Hillary tonight? Ah, uh, shoot. This sucks.